you know I'm a big fan of the game. <laughs> oh, thank you. We verified that that was true in the back, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not lying. I, I promise. <laughs> Before we get you going, a mandatory question. Please, can you share with us what is your favorite game? Well, I've been warned <laughs> ahead of time uh, because I could spend the whole whole conference talking about it. Um, but I'll keep it short because John Romero's in the back. I actually was talking to him about my first PC game that I fell in love with, which was Heretic, which was a Doom-like game um, set in a magical universe. So that was super exciting to talk to him about that. Great. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> now we know. And now, yeah, now you know. <laughs> the stage is yours. Please go ahead and enjoy the talk. Yeah. See you later. Thank you. Thank you for the intro. <laughs> so, so excited to be here. This is definitely the biggest crowd I've ever had to talk to. So, uh, please be gentle. Uh, I will be talking about BeatStar. I'll be talking about uh, BeatStar in the context of the hybrid casual genre space. If you don't know what I mean by that, I will definitely be explaining that, so no worries. Um, but first, a little bit more about myself. Kuka Ulen. <laughs> I wanted to uh, try speaking some Finnish while I had the opportunity. Uh, so, I, I noticed a lot of uh, presenters or people these days like to uh, use AI to create content for their presentations. So I did the exact very opposite, went completely analog and consulted my tarot cards. Um, so this is a little bit about me uh, talking about uh, my past. Uh, I am a game designer uh, in origin and at heart. My first job was as a game designer 14 years ago. Um, since then, I've done a lot of product management, uh, specifically in live games. Uh, and then in the present, really, past five years of my life have been BeatStar. I was part of the incubation team that took it all the way to launch. Um, and since launch, I've uh, last few months or so, I've been sitting more with the marketing team, trying to understand and absorb uh, everything that they know, because I believe more than ever, the mobile games industry marketing goes hand in hand uh, for the success of our products. Um, and this is to say, I know a little bit about marketing, and I will talk quite a bit about it, but I'm not an expert, so marketeers, please don't, no hard marketing questions at me, please, that'll be very embarrassing. Um, and then the last card, this came up as my future card. It just looks like I'm going to be very busy, to be fair. Um, and uh, BeatStar, of course, developed by Space Ape Games, not Ape of Space. The artist that uh, helped me with the slides put that in as a little joke. Hope you, hope you enjoy that. Um, but what is BeatStar for the people that don't know the game? Uh, it is a music rhythm action game. We launched September of 2021. We've had uh, over 50 million installs, over around 120 million in revenue. It's been um, by far Space Ape's biggest game. Uh, we, it's, uh, you play songs, you collect songs, they come in boxes. You can also purchase premium songs. We have a pass system, our version of Battle Pass, which is the tour pass that you can get additional songs from. Uh, we also have leaderboard events. We have a brag system where you can challenge friends with scores. And we've also had the privilege of a really good relationship with the music industry. So we've done partnership events with Nicki Minaj, um, uh, Eminem was a big one, and most recently, Linkin Park, which gave us our biggest uh, download peak since launch uh, when we partnered with them. So uh, a lot still going on on the, on the project um, as we speak. Uh, but coming down to hybrid casual and what I mean by it, I'll first define it a little bit because I think different people might have different things in mind. So there are these two, two major business models that come into play with hyper-casual, hyper-casual, and then tr 
I'll call it traditional free-to-play. I don't feel like there's a name for it, really. But so hyper-casual games, when you think of hyper-casual games, you'll think about uh, very novel gameplay, very quickly made, dare I say, cheaply made, um, and a lot, a lot of the time serving a lot of ads. And really, this one's going one step further, this is uh, an expression of the underlying business model. It's that they're targeting very low CPI uh, pardon my marketing jargon, <laughs> uh, if you don't know what CPI is, but it's, it's, uh, it's how much you pay to acquire users. And it, because you're targeting low CPI, um, you want that novel abstract gameplay to get as many people clicking in as possible, and then uh, you want to monetize them as quickly as possible because you are monetizing via ads, uh, and therefore, um, also, the investment ends up being quite low on the on the project, and then traditional free to play is pretty much the opposite in every every other way. And I won't go into it, but because uh, I think we all have a well, a lot of us have an understanding of it. But yeah, opposites. And what is the hyper casual dream then? The hyper casual dream is basically, I want my cake and I want to eat it too. I want the low CPI, I want users for cheap, I want to keep them for longer than hyper casual games do. I want the faster payback, I don't want to have to wait two years to get, get my marketing money back. Um, but but I, I want to have uh, ad revenue, which is IAA, ad revenue, IAP, in-app in -app purchases. I want both those things. Um, and this is what hybrid casual can do to your revenue. So this is Beastar when we soft launched, um, oh, sorry, during soft launch when we added ads for the first time, you can see that the ARP DAO basically doubled. Uh, these days our IAP, we are a little more IAP leaning, but still ad revenue is, is almost half of our business. So very much hybrid in the sense that it's, it's half and half. And how we got there, though, is kind of by accident. I, I don't think when, when, I, when we created Beastar, we had the, a clear understanding of what we were getting into. Really, we were referencing the hyper-casual games like Magic Tiles, the Tiles games as uh, inspiration or reference for our core gameplay. But we were com very much coming in from the IAP world, so the free-to-play models that we were used to. And so that's how we got there. But you'll see that um, these days, a lot of the hybrid, hybrid casual games will be more from hyper-casual studios, adding, trying to add uh, retention and meta and IAP to their games. But yes, this is how we got there. Um, so I will be talking about two major lessons. One lesson from the IAP world, one lesson looking into the IAA land. Uh, I'll, I'll talk about IAA. In, in IAA means ad revenue, just as a reminder. Um, and my spicy take on this is that content is retention. Um, uh, may, maybe spicy, maybe not. But this is just to say, as designers, we tend to look at retention from a very system, systems perspective. And maybe this is a way to look at retention from a slightly different perspective. And uh, for those of you that understand Finnish, this is the ver very famous Finnish saying, uh, if ask not what your content can do for your systems, but ask what your systems can do for your content. Uh, and so a little bit of story time. This is what people are amazed when I show this. This is what Beatstar used to look like, if you can believe. Um, so the origin of Beatstar is that it was conceived as a music RPG. You had characters, you had dancing, you had clothes, you had story, you had everything, anything under the planet. Um, it was a crazy project. Uh, and a lot of this was that, oh, we want to make a music game, but I think in order to have, have the uh, retention and the monetization we need, we need all these things. We need the progression. We need the economy. We need to be able to monetize. Um, and after three years uh, 
and, and some alpha testing, we landed in that dreaded space of mediocre KPI, and we decided to reset. And when we reset, this, we, we came back to the core gameplay. We said, we need to look at this from the core gameplay out. And this is, this is where I love to cook. Um, so I like to compare game making to cooking quite a lot. Um, and I think of the core mechanic as your steak. It's, it's your main, main appeal of the meal. It, you need to use good ingredients. You need to cook it to perfection. And, and then maybe you know what complements it. But if your steak is no good, your whole dish is no good. And by the way, this is, all of this is content. But if you're thinking about games as a service, you can't just have a dish. You must have a way to serve it over and over again. And that is where you're building the restaurant. The restaurant, I think of as the core loop. Um, and so we're going to talk quite a bit about the core loop. And this is where my uh, game designer at heart, you'll see that I start nerding out about core loops. Um, so at BeatStar, we redesigned the core loop five times. And this is just after the pivot, so before that, God knows how many times we redesigned that, but um, we've, we designed, and every time we learned quite a lot, every time we failed on the design. So I will go through some examples of that and, and kind of talk about what we learned there. But I think something interesting is that we weren't necessarily expecting having to do that. Um, and I think because hybrid casual, you're taking quite novel core mechanics and trying to build retention out of it. It can be, uh, there's not a lot of references often, and you are kind of in having to invent quite a lot. And so the first that loop that we tried, that you can see that we are, I'm still like hanging on to dear life to this character and these clothes <laughs> that we made. Uh, and uh, the simplest thing we could think of was, oh, you play songs, you collect currency, you buy some clothes. The clothes don't do nothing in the songs. Uh, they don't even help you get songs. So there was no loop. It did not work. So lesson one, yeah, maybe have a loop. The second one, uh, so that's when we identified, OK, I think our main content needs to be songs, and we need to reward songs, because that's ultimately what feels rewarding in this game. So we created this loop around song shards. You would collect song shards, and once you had enough song shards, you could use currency to then buy that song. And on paper, it looked great. It, uh, it, had, it had currencies. It was a loop. It made sense. But then in practice, what we found was uh, because I already knew which songs uh, I was going to be playing, the anticipation was already there. By the time I got the song and I played it, it just felt a bit like an old sock. I already knew I was going to experience it, and then I experienced it. And then the other problem was, because we were allowing them to buy and choose the content, if you ask any person how many, what are your favorite songs, they might name two, three, five. Most of us uh, don't have like a whole catalog of songs that they could name. So what they would, what players would do is just choose their favorite song, and then, and then by the second time the loop comes around, it's a little less exciting, a little less exciting. So that became a problem. So we quickly understood that, ah, okay, uh, the randomness needs to come from somewhere, and it needs to come from the loop. And then uh, this is when we were like, OK, we're tired. We're tired of inventing loops. Can we please find a loop in some other genre that we can just copy and try? Uh, and so we thought, OK, what is the closest genre to music games we could think of? Oh, well, racing games, kind of similar. Uh, you, you, you need to beat a score. You have skill, right? Yeah. OK, so let's try thinking of it as a racing game. So the songs became. Uh, racing tracks, uh, and as you went up leagues, uh, then you could unlock more tracks. Oh, it, they're even the same word, track and track. There you go. Um, anyway, this was the worst loop of all, <laughs> um, it turned out. Uh, and mainly because what we realized was, oh yeah, of course, a song track is not like a track. Uh, people, people have certain expectations when they come to a game and get to, they get to play a song. They're used to choosing any song they like, having access to it at any point they like. This is expectations of music. Um, and it felt absolutely awful for a game to be telling you, you need to play this song because this is what you need to be competing on right now. And you can't play that other song because that's not what we're competing on right now. So yeah, 
referencing can be very difficult in hybrid casual. Um, and finally, this is the core loop that we've ended up with. Um, it, it was very streamlined, it was much more simplified. You play song, you earn currency, you open chests, you get song. That's about it, but we added a friction point, and that friction point was a time delay. And the reason that time delay isn't there, is there, is not just for monetization, it does help with that, but uh, it was mainly because of sessioning, because what we found was as you played, uh, players were tending to open a new song right at the end of their session where they're kind of tired, they're ready to go, you know, uh, watch TV or just, uh, our game requires a lot of focus um, if, you, if you haven't grokked that. But, um, and it just made the new songs feel not, not nearly as good as they should. So by adding that delay, we moved the, the new song experience to the beginning of the ses session and that's, that's why it was designed like that. Um, and so if I were to do that whole journey again as somebody building something hybrid casual, what would I, would do, what would I do differently? I think I would first focus on defining your content. You know, what is your dish? What, is, what kind of restaurant are you trying to create? Is it a steakhouse? Is it a Hess burger, I hear, is, is a burger chain here? Um, or, or something else, and like once you define that content and really crafted that content, you can look at it from that perspective and craft your loops to be serving that content um, time and time again with excitement uh, and, and clarity of goals. Uh, so that, and in summary, uh, you came for the steak, in retent, what does retention mean? It means you came back for the steak. <laughs> okay, I, I'm the only one that enjoys these food references, maybe. Uh, so the next lesson is more from the IAA land, and this, this is more about um, kind of where, where I think we could have done better, actually, looking back at, at B-Star now. Um, and the, the text under there says, actually, this title is a trick because there is no balance, uh, there's only segmentation. And what do I mean by that? So with BeatStar, we, yes, I add revenue, amazing, we doubled our revenue. But did we fulfill the full goal of unlocking very cheap user acquisition? I would say we didn't, we haven't quite cracked that nut yet. And this is what we've learned. This is what we've learned by dabbling in these two zones, is that it's not actually just a tale of two business models. They're two very different audiences. Um, and that is going to require some things. Um, in our game, for example, the, the users that are acquired by very broad acquisition, very broad cheap acquisition, tend to be extremely young, way more young than our, our uh, users that we acquire using what we call AEO, which is paid um, optimized, payer optimized acquisition. And so they they, we would get these users and they are not expecting you know, the Bon Jovi, I don't know why Bon Jovi popped into my head first, but um, they're, expecting, they're expecting the new guys, the trap artists, um, yeah, my mind going blank on the trap artists. Uh, and so our content may be needed to be different. And there's like several examples of that. Or if, if they're coming from kind of countries like Brazil and Philippines, because that is how they're being acquired cheaply, then they're going to have very, very different devices and kind of di di different uh, performance expectations. Um, but not just that, they also have very, very different pay behaviors. So where, whereas before I thought, oh, you have your audience and you can monetize them this way or you, mo you can monetize them that way. No, actually, they're completely different audiences and they really don't want to pay. They really, really don't want to pay. And maybe they can't pay. They're too young. They're in countries where this is not really a thing. Um, and so where, where the IAA lessons I've learned or the ad design lessons I've learned is looking actually into the hybrid, hyper casual space now, uh, the ad designs really have moved on and they figured out a lot of cool things. So I've, I've highlighted some 
some, two of them for you that I think are doing some clever things. So one, this is, uh, this is in Stumble, guys. So what they do is, um, first off, the ads will be in the shop. And what this allows is, because in ad revenue, the earlier the user is in their journey, the more valuable they are, because once they've repeated uh, ad views, and then they become less and less valuable because they're, they're less and less likely to click. So what you want to do is to really uh, do I, IAA well is to allow the player to watch as ma many ads as they want um, in an opt-in way because you also don't want to hurt retention uh, on their first day. And if you put this in the shop, and the other thing that they do is they, the reward for playing, uh, watching the ad is a, um, is a cosmetic. What word am I using? Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's an item that doesn't impact the economy. So they can watch um, as many as, as, as they want. It's still, it's still desirable, but it doesn't then um, uh, hurt your economy. And then another thing that uh, these games do, this is collect them all. I think also also Voodoo. Um, I think all my examples are Voodoo. If anybody from, from Voodoo is here, respects. Um, so this is the Collect the ML game. This is their, their hybrid casual game. And something that they do that I find very clever is by, uh, they will offer a bundle that has remove ads very early on. And it'll be a high price point. 9.99 is quite, quite, quite high. Um, and again, they will put ads on cosmetic options so that players can watch as much as they want without uh, uh, impacting their IAP business. Uh, and then what this allows is, uh, once the player purchases this and removes themselves from ads entirely, and they can do this without FOMO because it's, again, cosmetic, then we, we basically have segmented these two um, audiences, and then we can optimize the uh, IAA audience as much as we would like without having to hurt the IAP audience or worrying about cannibalization. Cannibalization is something that we run into in BeatStar quite a lot because uh, the same currency that you get from our ads is the same currency that we give in the core loop and is the same, you, you get the same songs in, uh, by purchasing in premium. So every time we push on, on get aggressive on the ads, it, you, we see that it can cause cannibalization. So we have to be very careful. But these guys don't, and isn't that great? Um, so yeah, major, to just to summarize the key takeaways, from the IAP world, core loop, necessary for retention, but perhaps if we look at it from a content perspective and make content the star, uh, it will help you kind of craft the core loop from uh, clarity um, from a player perspective. And then the other takeaway is uh, that the audience for hyper casual and the IAP audience can be very different um, because of the way user acquisition is done. And so you want to be segmenting those audiences and ideally keeping economy separate as much as possible as well. And as a parting gift for you, I've done a, a, little, a little tarot reading for you for the future of, of uh, free to play. Is the future hybrid casual? That's totally a question, something we can talk about. When I look at uh, studios like Playrix, now introducing mini games into their games, they're starting to look much more hybrid casual. Um, and so there is a, there is a, a, a space that uh, all, a lot of these uh, companies are coming into where they, they, can, they can be more flexible. Um, and so, yeah, Knight of Swords, that represents the youth of free to play. Our business is so young. It's still changing all the time. We're still like discovering new ways to, to do things. Uh, but the present, the five of pentacles, that, is, that represents um, hard times. Hard times because, uh, thank you Apple for, in, for wanting to protect our privacy uh, and, and also the econ economic downturn. I think there was more pessimism maybe in mobile free to play than ever. But I think it's also a cause for invention, and uh, uh, invent the hybrid casual space is 
is just rife with invention right now, and perhaps it could help us uh, guide us into a more stable future represented by Queen of Pentacles. Thank you. I think that's it. <laughs>